Hey everyone, my name is Chloe and today I'm here to talk about my first half of March wrap up. So in the first half of March, um, I have been reading a fair amount and we have the backlist readathon um, to thank for that in the first half of the month as well as middle grade March and uh, unbeknownst to me, there was a let's get graphic readathon um, that I kind of un unknowingly took part in. So uh, as always, let's just get into the stats and then I will talk about the books. I'll talk about the middle grade books that I read both with myself and uh, with my kids and then I'll talk about young adult, adult, all the things, and let's just get into it. So the stats are just for the books that I read myself, and in the first half of the month, I read 14 books and DNF'd one. Um, that's 4,227 pages, and uh, it's 282 pages per day, which is crazy. Thank goodness for audio. Um, 302 pages per book is the average length, and that, so that's .93 books per day. Um, again, this is audio, graphic novel, novels, you'll, you'll see. So I read 11 novels, three graphic novels, nine were adult, three were young adult, and two were middle grade. And again, this is just my personal reading, not my reading with my kids. Um, seven were from my shelf and seven were from somewhere else. So uh, not ideal. Like I really want to be reading more off my shelves, but half is my goal. So there we go. Um, as far as the way I read them or the, the resources I util utilized to read them, because I did not read these all physically, I read four from Libby, three just directly off my shelf, three from NetGalley, three from the library, one on Spotify, and one on Libro FM. I really want to make sure, so I have a huge catalog on Libro FM that I'm not listening to, and, um, I really want to make sure I'm using my 15 hours of Spotify a month because I'm paying for it. Come on, let's just use it. I don't know why I don't. My Libby is so great. So um, that's where I get a lot. But anyway, nine were audiobook, five were paperback, um, four were new releases, and 10 were backlist. And then as far as genre goes, I read four mystery thrillers, three women's fiction, uh, three contemporary, one romance, one historical, um, one classic slash retelling, and one literary fiction. So Kind of all over the board. Uh, star ratings, though, it was not bad. Uh, I had the one DNF and then four three stars, uh, nine four stars, and one four and a half star. So average 3.75. That's better than normal. So let's just get into it. So the first one, I don't actually have the physical copy because somebody has been waiting for it at the library. So we made sure to get it back right away. But um, these first four I read with my kids. So we read Wish by Barbara O'Connor. Um, this is a really cute middle grade about this little girl who she goes um, her mom, her dad's in jail. Her mom is, uh, bedridden for some reason. I don't think it's physical. I think it's either alcohol abuse or mental health. It, it never explicitly says, but her mom's unable to take care of her. She has an older sister who is, I think like, um, freshly college age. So like new adult kind of age, unable to take care of her. So she gets sent to kind of the podunk town, um, to stay with her aunt and uncle. And at first she's really upset by this. She does not want to live. It's this house on the edge of like, a cliff and uh it's a it's a really country town and she's kind of from the city um and she's not not loving it and every day she makes at least one wish and um we don't know what the wish is but it's the same wish every single day and so she meets this dog. There's a stray dog that she befriends, and he becomes her companion. Um, she also makes friends with this little boy with a limp, and they become friends. He's got this big, uh, almost like Weasley-esque family, if you don't know Harry Potter references, but um, they're kind of like the Weasleys, a big, happy, kind of chaotic family. Um, they kind of embrace her and all of that, and she realizes that life isn't so bad where she is, and she gets the opportunity to go back home, and she doesn't know what to do. And um, so it's really really a good conversation starter about be careful what you wish for and making the most of situations and um, just just kind of being grateful for where you are and what's going on and moving on from there. So it was really cute. I would definitely recommend it. Um, next is, let's see, this Leprechauns and Irish Folklore. Um, I didn't know that these even existed. These are Magic Treehouse Research Guide, like, companions. So this is actually the companion to number, like, 43 in the Magic Treehouse series. Um, called it, The companion book is Leprechauns in Winter. We did not read that book. We just read this. Um, and it is a nonfiction. However, it's nonfiction about folklore. So, you know, whatever. But it's all about leprechauns and the different fairies and different... Um, different folklore around around all of it in Ireland. And um, so it was really interesting to talk to the kids about like what people believe, what we believe to be true, what we don't. Um, 
it was it was interesting and i really would like to we have the first maybe 40 in the magic treehouse series and we read them when my daughter was like four or five um, my oldest was four or five and she was a little freaked out by them but now that she's six um and my second is not nearly as fearful so i we might try again and i know they have graphic novels of these as well as these research guides um i don't think they have research guides for all of them but I know they do the first one, so I think we might revisit it and read the book. Uh, she can also read along in a graphic novel, and we can do the research guide to learn some true facts, and I think that would be really cool. Like, as a homeschooler, especially, all my lights are dinging, and it, it sounds really fun. So, um, this one itself was fine, but uh, it, was, it, it opened up some good paths. Next, we have um, The Leprechaun is Finally Gone by Dan Gutman, and this is a part of uh, my weird school my weird school, I think. This is a special. Um, this was fine. This is about a, a school. I can't remember how old they are, but um, they think there's a leprechaun, and I won't spoil if there really is or not, but uh, the, the leprechaun's finally gone. Then we have um, The Leprechauns Don't Play Basketball, and this is by um, Debbie Debbie. Debbie Dady and uh, Marsha Thornton Jones. This is a part of the Adventures of the Bailey School Kids. Um, I never read this as a kid or anything like that, but uh, somebody that I know said they remember this series fondly. I did not like this book very much, um, but I think I was a little harsh in my Goodreads review. Um, I didn't love it, but this is about some kids. Um, it's narrated, my problem is it's narrated by this little boy who's just really like rude and crass. And again, I can't remember how old they're supposed to be, but somewhere in elementary school. And they've got a Romanian teacher. Um, and then this guy comes to be like a substitute PE teacher. And they think um, she is like a vampire. He's a leprechaun. There's a rivalry going on, they think. Um, so th it's okay. Uh, there's a little bit that's underexplained. A lot of like uh, unfair stereotypes and things. So this one was not it for me. I'm not interested in picking up any more of the series, but if it holds nostalgia for you, I would, I would love to hear from people who have read this as a kid and then reread it as an adult and see what you think. I think this is like number four in the series. Um, so maybe, maybe that's part of it. I don't know. And then I think that's all that I read with them. Um, so then we have the two middle grade that I read with myself. So I read Stepping Stones by Lucy Neasley, or Nisley, I'm not sure how you say it, but I love this graphic, ar 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 graphic novel artist and author. Um, she has written quite a few memoirs about her life growing up. Um, she traveled a lot. Her parents were foodies of some sort, I can't remember. Um, she had a baby and all, you know, she wrote memoirs about all those things. This is not a memoir, but it's very very close to her actual life. So her mom and dad split up and our main character, I can't remember what her name is, um, Jen, her mom and dad split up and um, her mom moves her to the country. She lives on this farm. She's responsible for the chicken coop, all these things. And she hates it. She is not about that. Her dad lives in the city um, and she just wants to go back to the city so bad. Um, but she can't. So she's with her mom and she has to work at the farmer's market. And then her new stepdad, they're not married yet, but her new stepdad um, has two daughters that come to visit for spring break or something. And uh, this is the one that's that's Jen's age and she's really snotty to her, the two butt heads. Um, and they kind of learn to, she learns to accept her life at the farm as well as um, they learn to get along a little bit. It was super cute. Then there's a follow-up to that. It's a duology. So we have Apple Crush. This one is um, like if you're a big fan of uh, goodness, what's that book? Ra Rainbow uh, Pumpkin Heads by Rainbow Rowell. Is that the graphic novel? Um, that's so it's a, based around a fall um, like pumpkin patch and stuff. If you love that, I think you should try this um, because this is like a middle grade version of that. They are putting on this fall fest and um, pumpkin patch and stuff now that the farmer's market is over and they're trying to make it scary. Um, this girl, now she gets her first boyfriend and so our main character, Jen, is like kind of kind of feeling left out but also she's not interested in boys when everybody else kind of is. Um, there's no like sexuality thing conversation here. She's just not at that point yet. And um, so it's, an again, an interesting exploration. This one's shorter. It's just a fun little companion if you like the first one. So that is all the middle grade. Now let's get into the young adult. I read three and these were all for the backlist readathon, which I blogged. So I will link that down below and I won't go 
too much detail um, just because I don't want to be redundant, but I read Not Exactly Love by Devin Brown. Um, this is a story of a 13-year-old girl who is got this crush on this boy, and um, it's her, written in her diary entries from January 1st to Valentine's Day. There's this big school skate party on Valentine's Day, and she's kind of wanting him to ask her, um, and just kind of navigating that first crush, crush situation and how it's not really unrequited because they're friends. He likes her as a friend, but does he like her as more? Um, the fact that this is journal entry, diary entries, and it's only like 145 pages means you could read this in like not very long at all. And it was super cute. And um, again, I said in the vlog that like it's been a long time since I've been this age, but it felt pretty authentic. And it's written, by, it's a, a female perspective written by a man. And I think he did pretty well. So um, interesting, fun story. And this is by Alice Nest Publisher, which is Katie from Life Between Words. Love her so much. So uh, if you're interested at all, pick this up and support the publishing house. Um, next is Out of the Easy by Rudis Petty's. This is, um, so Rudis Fettes writes historical fiction in a way that I, I, like very few other people does. She typically writes about things that you don't, you, I haven't heard about. And, um, she researches the heck out of things. And this one is not necessarily about a topic that you don't know anything about. It's 1950s, I think, in the French Quarter of New Orleans. And, um, this girl, her mom, Josie is her name. Her mom is a prostitute. She's living kind of in this brothel. Um, and it's just about the seedy underbelly of, of New Orleans at the time. And um, our main character is trying to uh, get out and go to college. And she works in this bookstore with a friend. And she just has dreams of um, getting out of this situation. And there's a lot of found family elements that I really liked. And Ruta Sepetti's does atmosphere. My goodness. Like, I felt the New Orleans vibe. I felt the kind of darkness. Um and just uh, the danger that's involved. Um, it, this it was very good in that regard. Um, I just didn't love the story. This was a three star story for me. It wasn't my favorite, but I know this has super high ratings. Um, so I am gonna let this one go probably and put it on Pango. But um, I yeah. So there's that. And then our last YA is uh, Meg, Joe, Beth, and Amy by Ray. Tur Terciero and Brie Indigo. This is a graphic novel retelling of Little Women, and I loved it. So, um, in this story, they're a blended family. Um, Meg, Meg and Joe um, both had, he, he, she had a dad, he, she had a mom, they got together, and then they've had these two kids. Um, the dad's off at war. These girls are struggle, struggling with poverty. Mom's a nurse working double shifts, all the things. Um, this follows pretty much part one of Little Women. Uh, it's very accurate in some ways, and some things are a little bit different. It's very modernized. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. There's, you know, there's enough differences that it's modernized and uh, and all of that, but uh, it's very true to the story as well. I really like the art style. Um, I just, I thought this was really good. So I liked this a lot and would definitely recommend so now let's get in to the adult books. So I have some of them, don't have all of them, but the first one is The Guest by B.A. Paris. Um, I love B.A. Paris. I would tell you I really enjoy her. However, her last two have just not been for me, and this this one was just not for me. I gave it three stars. Um, this is about a couple. They come home from vacation and find their friend um, still staying at their house. She wants to stay longer because she is having problems with her husband. Um, he's in Paris. They're not, you know, whatever. Um, this is not a thriller, honestly. This is a drama about a bunch of people keeping secrets from each other for really no reason, and then those secrets coming out. And um, I didn't like any of the characters, and like I can get behind a good villain, but there's not even a villain. Everybody's just like kind of sucks, kind of flat, kind of bleh. Um, I didn't really care. I didn't really care about any of the characters. I didn't really care that much about the story. The twist is great. I liked it. I mean, it's not great. It's fine. Uh, I liked it, but I wouldn't recommend this one. Um, it was just, just fine for me. Next is By the Time You Read This by Lola J, which is also a three-star book. Um, this one is, I think I read this also for the Backlist Readathon, maybe. I don't know. I don't know if I did or not. I'll link the vlog down below. But this is about a girl um, who her dad dies uh, when she's like five or something. And he writes her letters from the time she's 12 to... 30 or something like that. Um, I don't know. Uh, whatever. He die, like he dies and leaves her all these letters. So she turns 12, 13, whatever, the first one. Um, and it's called The Manual. It's advice to live by, all that kind of stuff. Now, I, thank God, have not lost my father. And um, if you have, this might hit an emotional string a little bit more for me or more for you. But this one... 
just lacked the emotion that I really wanted from a book like this. I didn't really like the main character. I didn't, I mean, I didn't dislike her. There was just nothing to really like cause you to empathize with her. Um, we don't get to see any of the relationship with her and her dad. And I think that is part of it. And also that like he's been gone so long before the letters start is interesting. Um, but we like don't get any investment. And then her life is very ordinary, you know, which is fine. I don't need like an exciting, crazy life because that's not true to life. Most of our lives are pretty ordinary, but like she gets jobs, she goes through relationships. His advice is pretty kind of like generic. Um, and since we never knew him before he died, I feel like like his voice didn't really mean that much. Um, you know, I don't know. It just was very meh for me. I really wanted an emotional connection because this could be like really good. I think with a little more setup, it would have been really good. But as it was, it was just meh. Um, let's see. Next is uh, Cluelessly Yours by Max Monroe. So I think this is part of a series, but you don't really need to read it in a series at all. This book is about a girl. I can't remember her name. Um, I read it on NetGalley, but this is about a woman who um, her husband has died, I think, and she has two sons. And she's got a little sister who is like her best friend and her sister is pregnant. And um, it's kind of a love triangle between a guy who's like perfect on paper. They're just like met in the dating scene. And then um, a pediatric, uh, I think he's a, a radiologist or something, um, or an anesthesiologist. I can't remember. It, 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 this guy who he's been friends with her for a long time. So it's kind of a, a love triangle there. Um, but I definitely shipped one guy over the other. And um, there's, it, it's just a really, I would say this almost, like even though I'm telling you about the relationship part, it was almost women's fiction-y because it's a lot of relationship dynamics between her and her sister, her with her kids, um, kind of dating with kids and what that looks like. And um, there was a lot of good conversation and I really like the relationship that she ended up in. And um, I didn't like the steam in this book. There, It, it does get pretty steamy. It's after um, the relationship is like established. So it's not, you know, I don't know. I just, I don't really need any of that. So, um, yeah, there's, there's kind of my thoughts on that. I really enjoyed it. And if it would have had less steam, it would have been like a four and a half star. Um, next is Bye Baby by Carola Lovering. So I really like Carola Lovering books. Um, they're thrillers, but again, more on the side of dramas. This, I gave four and a half stars. Um, this is about two friends who were friends um, growing up. And they both kind of grew up from humble beginnings. But now one of them is this major influencer. And the other one is still kind of just living kind of more of a humble life. She's dating a police officer. Um, whereas the influencer is like, she wouldn't even look at a guy unless he had money and was from a, a family with a name. And um, so now she's living this like life of luxury and, you know, doing her influencer thing. And then um, one night she she just had a baby, um, so she's a hand. I don't know how many months old she is, but it's her it's her birthday, the mom's birthday, and so uh, and her baby gets taken. She flips out and says she wants um, our friend from the past. However, our friend from the past is the one that has the baby. We know that from the beginning. We know that from the synopsis. Um, there's no, that's not a spoiler. It's their friendship dynamics, both in the past and now. And um, the suspense of knowing, are we, is she going to figure out who did what, when, and um, how things went down? And so it's really suspenseful. You don't know who's going to do what or how things are going to work out. I really, really enjoyed it and was thoroughly entertained throughout. Next, we have The Day Tripper by James Goodhand. This is another one I had on NetGalley, and I ended up DNFing it. This is about a guy who um, is living this life. He's got this fiance or whatever, and then he gets into this big fight and wakes up, and it's a different year, and he's in a completely different situation. And um, it's about, like, he continually switches times, um, but I just didn't like it. I didn't like our main character. I wasn't really invested in him. Um... I thought it was a little bit confusing. I I don't know. I just, I didn't read a ton of it. I read maybe a third of it and then decided I was done. Um, next is The Last Love Note by Emma Gray. Um, so this is about a woman who her husband was... Um, terminally ill. He got he got early onset Alzheimer's. And I feel like that needs to be said because that is a big trigger um, for a lot of people. And so he gets it and um, passes away. And it's both her 
learning to work through grief and find her new normal. Um, and we also get then timelines of of their relationship as the disease started, as it progressed, all that kind of stuff. She has a boss named Hugh was who was good friends um, with her husband, and he's very, very supportive of her always. Um, and I really liked that. I, I, I really liked our main character. I really liked Hugh. I liked all of it. Um, this is not lighthearted by any means. This is a very heavy book. And for somebody who has been who has lost a spouse young or who has been through Alzheimer's, I don't know if this would be uh healing or harmful, honestly, because it is it's a lot. It's very, very heavy. Um yeah, and so I I was very emotionally invested in this one and really liked it. I didn't like um, some of the caginess that was going on. You know, there's some things I like that or I didn't like that I don't want to talk about because I don't want to get too spoilery with it. But um, the other thing I don't like is like the last love note. The love note situation doesn't really come in until the very end. So I think there could have been a better title for this. But um, yeah, there's that. I, I gave it a four stars. I really enjoyed it, but definitely with uh, with the caveat of like, know what you're getting into because it's heavy. Then we have um, The Quiet Tenant, and this is a really interesting book. Um, it's a, I, I talked about this in, the, in my vlog, and I think I may have um, dissuaded some people based on what I said, and in a way I don't want to. So this is about a serial killer told from the perspective of three women in his life. However, it's not really about the serial killer. It's more about the women. Um, it's So it's told from the perspective of his daughter, um, he, uh, a woman who he's kind of starting a relationship with um, that's a bartender and uh, the one woman he has held captive and not actually killed. And so it's really interesting um, because obviously he's not, nobody knows who he is. Um, and so it's all these different women navigating their relationships with this man and the different sides of this man. And um, the the perspective of the woman that he has captive is fascinating. Um, it's told in second person. So it's like, you do this, you do this, all that kind of stuff. And I have read other books. Um, I'm looking at you by Carolyn Kepnes. Um, and I've hated that. I have not, I've read a couple books with a second perspective and I did not like it. And this one I really did because he gives her a new identity and stuff. And you can just tell the defense mechanism of shutting down and depersonalizing the situation and almost as if she's out of body watching what's going down. And um, the whole time I really wanted to know, was she going to be okay? Were other people going to fall into his trap? Um, I was fascinated by just perception of this man and how different it can be based on where you're standing. And so I really like this book and uh, gave it four stars. Next is, let's see, um, The Lion's Den by Catherine St. John. So I have started a project over on Patreon. And I, if you're not on Patreon, I would love to have you over there. Everybody has recommended me a book and I am reading them. Um, and so this was one of the recommendations. I had never heard of this book and I don't know, I think this might have been, correct me if I'm wrong, it might have been a book of the month. Obviously, I did not pick it up. Um, I really liked this book. So this is about a, uh, a, a a gal. I can't remember her name. I'm so bad at names. Belle. Um, she gets invited to go on this yacht trip with her kind of former best friend, kind of similar to this, the bye baby. Um, her former best friend who has now become like a sugar baby. And so she's got this boyfriend who's like 40 years older than her. He's uber wealthy businessman. And he's got this yacht. And um, he, she invites him on the, or she invites Belle on a trip for a week or 10 days or whatever to go Italy, Greece, all that kind of stuff. And so even though their relationship is um, kind of strained, not what it used to be, all that kind of stuff, she decides to go. And when she goes, uh, things are strange. Things are very strange. He is very controlling. He has set um, assigned seats for the airplane and she has to sit backwards despite the fact that she gets violently ill. Um, there's assigned roommates. You are not allowed to your passport or um, there's no internet, all that kind of stuff that like, what is the point here? What are we doing? What's your goal? What What's going on? It's a very sinister feeling the whole time. And we're, we're kind of um, watching. So we get the past and then we also get like day one, two, three um, of this trip as things kind of get more and more sinister and more and more weird. And um, I really enjoy this book. This like I had quite a few books this month that had me like reading at times where I don't normally read because I just had to know what was going on. So and this was one of them. So um, four stars, really great recommendation, and I would definitely recommend it. 
Um, and then last is Ready or Not by Cara Bestone. So um, I've read one other Cara Bestone book, but she writes romance. And generally, that's not my bag. But this one... Um, Sounded so interesting, and I really liked it. So this is about a woman who finds herself unexpectedly pregnant after a one-night stand with a bartender. She has never really been the one who cares about babies. I, I think she's like late 20s, early 30s. I don't know. She's kind of older, living in New York, I believe, and just never really was the one that was like goo-goo about babies. Um, her best friend, on the other hand, has been trying to have a baby forever with her husband and um, has not had any luck. So she there's that relationship dynamic of like, okay, how do I tell her that I'm unexpectedly pregnant with this bartender's baby. Um, there's that relationship dynamic that I loved seeing because uh, as somebody who has struggled with infertility and as somebody who has friends who struggle even more so with infertility, um, that line is so weird. And like that, navigating those things are so weird and so hard. Um, and just seeing you know, the way friendships come and go and the strength of a friendship based on something that is so hurtful to some people. Like, I don't know, I could go on a soapbox forever, but seeing that relationship dynamic is really great. Um, the bartender also, she does tell him, so this is not some secret baby, surprise baby, anything. She tells him, but he has now reunited with his girlfriend. So there's that dynamic. And then also her best friend um, has this brother who they grew up together and he's kind of like, just Mr. Cinnamon Roll, like, I'll help you through this. Um, and so I love that. I love the Cinnamon Roll hero. I love stories about pregnancy, especially from people who are not um, like the baby type, because I was always the baby type. I like from, I, I loved babies. I loved babies. And I'm the youngest of my family and of cousins and everything. So like everybody started having babies when I was still a young kid. And so um, I have always loved babies. And like being a mom is what I've always wanted to do. And, you know, so it's so fun to me to see like a perspective that's different than that and how they navigate pregnancy because even being that like baby type always wanted to be a mom pregnancy is rough pregnancy is rough like with a capital r so seeing somebody like kind of get hit over the head with it makes me um like it's entertaining to read about i don't know i also love a cinnamon roll hero however my complaint about this book i gave it four stars um my complaint about it is that he's like cinnamon roll with no confidence and like I love a cinnamon roll who's like hey I'm good with who I am but I also like just love the heck out of you he has a lot of insecurities from childhood from bullying all that kind of stuff and he's um a little too much um a little over the top a little doormatty and so I didn't love that um but overall I really enjoyed this book and um would definitely recommend and it's such a pretty cover so um yeah fun book so overall I had a great reading month especially here towards the end some of the like four stars for me is a really solid rating um four and a, like some of these after like Time has passed and thinking about Bye Baby, I gave it four and a half, whereas some of these others I gave four, they're all really good. There's something that holds them off from being a five star, which is an all-time favorite, but they're all really good. So um, yeah, I read some great ones and I hope it continues. I will link my backlist uh, readathon down below as well as Patreon. I have... I'm going to be working on this project for a while. So if you join here in the next couple months, I'd be happy to take a recommendation. Um, I'm doing vlogs of each book um, for them over there. So I'd love to see you over there if you have a recommendation. And yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.